you won't see one like it again. Live from West Michigan's news leader, this is 24-Hour News 8. The state of Michigan pulls the plug on an AIDS counseling program for couples getting married. Neighbors along M37 campaign for a new street to make their lives a little safer. And our top story tonight, businesses booming for charter schools and many are adding on just to keep up. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday night. I'm Suzanne Jiha. And I'm Tom Van Howe. School is set to start in a little more than a month now. And charter schools are busy getting ready for a huge new influx of hundreds of new students. News Ace education reporter Wendell Edwards is live at Vista Charter Academy to tell us about this charter school growth spurt. Tom, Susan, National Heritage Academy charter schools are expecting about a thousand new students to enroll in one of their charter schools this fall. That's why this summer construction crews are working overtime just to make sure there's enough room for them all. There is a lot of hard work going on at Vista Charter Academy. Construction workers are busy getting this building ready for the start of a new school year. First grade teacher Joy Ulsterhurt is busy getting her new classroom ready as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's awesome. It's huge compared to my old one. A room that gives her much more space than she had before. Space is important. If you don't have enough space, the kids are too close and they are a little more edgy, get a little, have a little less patience because they feel like they don't have enough room to work. There will be plenty of room here next year. Workers are building an entire new wing, seven new classrooms designed to help make room for 100 additional students. Jeff Poole is the vice president of marketing for National Heritage Academy. Most of our schools have ex expansion projects and in fact in the Grand Rapids area, of the 11 schools we have, 10 have some type of expansion projects going on. National Heritage Academy has about 20 construction projects going on in and out of state. And when all is said and done, about 52 new classrooms will be built. That is equal to building three brand new schools. Poole attributes the growth spurt to parent demand. The parents are calling us saying uh, we're looking uh, for opportunities. Uh, they're looking around more, and I think they recognize they have a choice. For Joy Osterhurt, more space makes it easier for her to teach and for students to learn. Oh, it's great. Oh, more walls, more places to work, more group work, centers. Great things. As of now, all of the construction projects in the Grand Rapids area are on schedule to be finished just in time for the start of the school year late next month. We're live in Grand Rapids. Wendell Edwards, News 8. Okay, thanks, Wendell. Well, if you've noticed, a few more clouds are moving in this evening. And we've got some chilly nights ahead mm -hmm. of us. Meteorologist Craig James joins us now with a first look at the weather. Craig. We do indeed. In fact, I think clouds tonight will probably keep us from getting to record lows, but um, we've got a chance there could be some in the state tomorrow night. But this evening, if you are going out, you'll notice the clouds thickening up and the sun will disappear, has already disappeared, in fact, in the, the northern part of the viewing area. Temperatures by 11 o'clock down to 57 to 61. Sunset is at 917, and there might be some sprinkles of rain in these clouds later. I'll be back to show you the radar in just a few minutes. All right, see you then, Craig. Mm -hmm. Next. Big changes could be on the way for another West Michigan retirement home, and once again, the reason is money. Officials at Hope Network Community Haven have notified Ottawa County they will end their arrangement with the county on September 30th. Community Haven officials say they simply cannot afford to continue. When the county operated the home, it had to subsidize the operation with about $900,000 a year. Hope Network says it cut costs, but it's still losing $350,000 a year. Hope did say it was willing to continue operating the home if the county agreed to cover the losses. Police are one step closer to finding out how a Grand Rapids man died Sunday night. When police arrived at this home on Prospect in Grand Rapids, 51-year-old William Douglas Bland was dead in an upstairs bedroom. Police have now located the gun used in the shooting. It is at the crime lab for analysis. An autopsy confirmed Bland was shot in the head. Also tonight, medical examiners say they now know why a three-month-old baby died in Allegan County. Kyle Anthony Jones' mother took him to the hospital early yesterday morning. Michigan State Police say based on the investigation and the autopsy, the baby died of accidental asphyxiation. Meantime, police say another teen has died from the high-speed car crash in rural Kalamazoo County. It happened early Monday morning on R Avenue in Texas Township, and authorities believe the car was traveling at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour when it went out of control. 
The driver, 16-year-old Michael Rylander from Portage, was killed in the crash. Today, 18-year-old Alexander Wilson also died from his injuries. 17-year-old Jason Gesmundo remains in critical condition tonight. All of the teens were wearing seatbelts. Some neighbors in Caledonia say they have to risk their lives just to get a gallon of milk. Tonight, they're asking for a new road to help fix the problem. News 8 Susan Samples joins us live from Caledonia with details. Risk their lives for a gallon of milk? Well, that's what they say here. We are live along M37 during rush hour. This is, of course, not an easy road to get out onto, but that is what the residents of Glen Valley Estates say they have to do every time they want to go to the grocery store, which is just down the road. That's a situation that they want to change. Traffic just flies by. Welcome to Scott Sherland's nightmare. Uh, but you're forced to jump out onto 37, whether you want to or not. It's a nightmare Sherlin has to endure just to get to the grocery store less than a mile from his subdivision. I mean, it really is a take-your-life-in-your-hands situation in prime time. A situation Sherlin and, uh, and his neighbors say could be easily remedied. See this dirt track off the end of this court? Turn it into a road, and nearby residents could reach the grocery store without having to get out on M37 at all. In fact, some people are already doing that. It may seem like the perfect solution. The developer who owns this land has even agreed to pay for such a road. The problem, because of a prior agreement, the owner of a neighboring shopping center also has a say in any road building project here. And so far, Bill Hitchcock has appeared unwilling to sign off on it. Hitchcock, who owns Caledonia Village Center, where the grocery store is located, refused an interview today, but has reportedly told others he fears the developer who would build the road would also build a shopping center. More competition for the village center. As for store owners here, at least one says Hitchcock is getting a bad rap. I like the man. He's helped me get my business started. I think there's more to a story than what we're being told. Whatever the real story here, it is definitely one that will go on for some time. Scott Sherland's traffic nightmare is far from over. The controversy over the building of that road has been going on here for more than a year now. Residents versus one developer versus another developer. Tonight at 7 o'clock, the Caledonia Planning Commission will try to sort this all out, try to figure out where this debate goes from here. We are live in Caledonia. Susan Samples, News 8. So does the final decision rest with Caledonia or does it go to the county or what, Susan? The, the Planning Commission uh, could vote to recommend the building of that road be allowed. That would then go to the uh, commission here or the city council, excuse me, Caledonia Village Council. They would make the final decision. Uh, Bill Hitchcock could argue against that. It could end up in court. We don't know. <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Susan. We have all seen them more than once. In fact, there may be one, two, three, five, maybe more on your corner right now. Maybe you put one of them there. But those garage sale signs and political posters on utility poles are, in fact, illegal. And the utility companies say they have got to go. Utility companies say the signs on the utility poles are, on, are, are an ongoing problem and can create huge problems for linesmen who have to climb poles to make repairs. There is no formal program to remove them, but utility crews often take them down when they spot one. Well, it is an interesting requirement and one you'll only face here in Michigan. Up next, find out about, about plans to change a controversial requirement for couples to get married in the state of Michigan. And we'll check out a new program giving some West Michigan kids a new direction in their lives. Those stories and a lot more coming your way on your 24-hour News 8. Tonight at 11, in an in-depth 24-hour News 8 report, are some of our brightest kids falling through the cracks? I am president of two companies. Now I do stuff like Visual Basic, Perl, CGI, HTML, JavaScript. His test scores are the highest, but he struggled in school. How can we challenge kids like this? Brian Sterling takes an in-depth look at advanced students. Watch Challenging Kids, tonight at 11 on 24-Hour News 8. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay. What's all the fuss about? Look, it's Dave. Thanks, Dave. Why is everybody thanking Dave? Way to go, Dave. Thanks, Dave. 
Well, they're just showing their appreciation for Wendy's barbecue bacon cheeseburger. It's natural cheddar, hickory smoked bacon, and smoky barbecue sauce. Dave, I just want to say thanks. Well, that's a relief. Come try Wendy's barbecue bacon cheeseburger today. And remember, Wendy's pickup windows open till midnight, so you can eat great. Thanks for stopping. Even late. The 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis, the only car in its class with a V8 engine, spacious interior, vacation-sized trunk, rated number one in owner loyalty. Plus, it has the government's highest five-star crash test rating. It also rates high with 1,500 cash back or low 0.9 APR limited term financing. Travel first class for the price of coach. Start living large in Mercury Grand Marquis. See your local Mercury dealer today. Live from Wood TV8, West Michigan's news leader, Suzanne Jiha, Tom Van Howe, meteorologist Craig James, and Jack Doles with sports. 24-hour News 8 continues. Michigan is the only state in the union to require AIDS counseling before marriage, but that requirement won't last for long. Not long ago, Governor Engler signed legislation ending the 11-year-old program. News 8's Brett Thomas has the rest of that story. Let's go get on the merry-go-round with Rachel, okay? Five years ago, Susan Kepley tied the knot. And like nearly every other Michigan couple, she and her husband attended a mandatory AIDS awareness course. And it was just kind of checking it off the list, I guess, at that point. One more thing we had to do to be, get through the requirements. Amongst all the craziness of preparing for a wedding, she viewed the class as kind of an annoyance and an unnecessary one. I thought it was a lot of statistics. And, but not a lot of information that I hadn't heard, either through TV or the newspaper or different types of media. Chair recognize the majority floor leader. The legislature apparently agreed, calling an end to the requirement starting January 1st. Prevention education is all we have. For the Kent County Health Department, it's a disappointment. Nearly every day for the last 11 years, 24 people would come to this classroom, watch a slide presentation, talk to a nurse, and then leave with maybe a little better understanding of the virus. Denise Bryan says it's something they've all benefited from. I have seen a real needy population get answers to their questions, get testing, treatment, and referral. So it comes down to, once again, a missed opportunity. That lost opportunity won't weigh heavily on Susan's mind. She believes the information is already out there. Most people learn it long before they marry. And if they aren't informed about whether their, their partner has AIDS at that point, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't ready to get married anyway. <laughs> In Grand Rapids, Brett Thomas, News 8. And she probably has a good point. The new law requires couples be given an AIDS pamphlet when they apply for a marriage license. The decision will not affect other health department AIDS programs. Anybody that needs AIDS counseling, information, and testing can still get it for free at the health department. Well, it was not exactly your typical July day. Well, not at all. <laughs> Plenty of spring-like highs today. Craig is in to tell us how long this cool weather will last. These aren't your typical cravings. This is Long John Silver's Golden Fried Shrimp. Now try our new 21-piece shrimp basket combo, just $3.99. Now you can shop for a mattress at home, and you'll save money by buying direct from the manufacturer. For over 50 years, Jonathan Stevens has made quality mattresses in Grand Rapids. Call a Jonathan Stevens sleep specialist at 243-4342, and they'll bring the store to you, so you can compare mattresses in the comfort of your own home. Jonathan Stevens, a better mattress at a better price. Shop at home or visit a factory direct showroom in Grand Rapids or Kalamazoo. What kind of drug benefit will Washington add to Medicare? The one-size-fits-all Clinton plan may have side effects. If you've got good private drug coverage, you could lose it and end up in the big government plan that could interfere with what your doctor prescribes. There's a better way. Make sure seniors get the choices members of Congress and their families have. A choice of good private prescription coverage. Tell Washington you don't want big government in your medicine cabinet. It's a celebration. Fazoli's is celebrating 10. 10 years of fresh Italian food served good and fast. 
and 10 years of free, fresh-baked Italian breadsticks. 10 years of dining in, driving through, and letting us do our best for you. Come celebrate with a 10th anniversary sampler platter. Piled high with lasagna, creamy fettuccine, and steamy spaghetti with meat sauce. Hurry in to celebrate 10 years of real good Italian with a real great sampler platter at Fazoli's. Special manufacturer allotments for our new facility mean the absolute lowest prices on the largest inventory in our 75-year history. Over 1,500 available. With hundreds more on the way, we'll do what it takes to put you behind the wheel. Cavalier LS four doors from 189 per month. Blazers from 199. Venture vans from 289. Silverado four x fours from 299. Search and price our entire inventory at BergerChevy.com. Berger Chevrolet, one minute west of Woodland Mall, 28th Street. But we've either regressed the spring or progressed the fall, whichever. Uh, it is certainly not much like July here in western Michigan today, nor will it be really the rest of the week. Temperature is 67 at the current hour. Dew points down low at 51, giving us 56% humidity. A barometer going up. Winds are out of the north at 13, and that, of course, is what has brought in the cooler air today. Temperatures uh, only made low 70s in most inland areas this afternoon. And, of course, we've had no precipitation, but there may be a little bit here during the night tonight. And again, uh, really no pollen count to speak of either through the week and into through the weekend, as a matter of fact. And as far as temperatures, uh, only in the 60s in most of the lower peninsula, still a few low 70s showing up. But look at all of the 50s off here to our north and northwest. Uh, it has been raining off and on parts of the afternoon out in Wisconsin, and their high temperatures have only been in the 50s. So it has certainly been a very, very chilly day. That's more like October uh, than July. Started out very clear uh, this morning, but you can see the clouds generally in the northern part of our viewing area today. Now clouds are coming in everywhere and will certainly go overcast if it isn't already at your house fairly soon. Any last little bit of sunshine won't be lasting uh, much longer. There has been rain to our west. More of it uh, shows up on the radar than what's actually reaching the ground. But this heavier batch in through here, it is getting smaller and weakening as it comes. But that does have a chance of coming down into western Michigan here during the night. Probably it uh, wouldn't amount to very much. Some trace amounts or a couple of hundredths of an inch at most. I don't think we'll see any significant rain. That will all be down here in Iowa, Illinois, and on down along the Ohio River Valley, where probably some very heavy thunderstorms may develop there again tonight. That's all along this front. But those are heading to the southeast, as is this little batch of light rain. So this high will take over again by tomorrow afternoon. You can see it's nice and clear today north of Lake Superior. Still only in the 50s, even with sunshine up there. But uh, as this high drops to the south, we'll see some clearing tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night, with clear skies, we could see temperatures down into the 40s. It's not going to be a very warm night. And here this afternoon, you can see the temperatures in the 50s out here, where the clouds have been, where the rain has fallen. Still very hot to the south and southwest. Temperatures, uh, the really hot air has moved back into Texas and on down into the desert southwest today. Temperatures at Phoenix will probably top out at 112 today and most likely again tomorrow, too. But this high will be over us tomorrow, giving us a dry afternoon and dry night. A new cool front will have formed off to our northwest. That'll drop southeast, but a little more slowly than it looked like yesterday. So I think any showers will probably hold off until late Thursday into Thursday night. But behind it, still looks pretty good for this coming weekend. So let's check the details for tonight. It'll become cloudy. Some sprinkles late tonight, lows low to mid-50s, and a north-to-northeast breeze at less than 5. And tomorrow we'll start out with a lot of clouds, but sky should become partly cloudy during the afternoon. Low 70s only for highs. Northeast wind in the morning will become light northwesterly during the day. Same along the lake, but it should probably go totally clear there along the lake. It'll be a much more pleasant evening tomorrow evening than what we're having this evening because we'll have more sunshine. Out on the lake tomorrow, waves calm to just a foot or two. And that north wind has dropped water temperatures, as you can see, to low 60s. So it'll become nice again by tomorrow afternoon. It'll start out nice, but very chilly Thursday morning. And then late Thursday, Thursday night into Friday, maybe a shower or a thunder shower. And right now, best bet is still. It would dry out for the weekend with some comfortable temperatures and a pretty nice weekend coming up, too. So Boy, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks pretty good. Thanks, Craig. Yep. Still to come, it's a massive plan, but the push to make it a reality is going full speed. Up next, we'll check out the latest plans to create the giant Millennium Park here in West Michigan. Coming up, driving and using your cell phone. Are you putting others at risk and in depth look? Plus, a young mother trapped in a tree about to give birth. How did mother and child survive? We'll tell you next on NBC Nightly News. One brand is chosen by shoppers like you over four and a half million times. Every single week. One brand helps you save on your weekly grocery bill. Over 2,000 ways.
One brand guarantees you'll like what's inside every product you buy. Or we'll double your money back. Spartan brand. Only at the store with Spartan on the door. You're one of a kind. There are folks who want rugged durability without sacrificing passenger room. And for years, Ford has made the truck for them. It's called Explore, and it outsells all other compact SUVs. Right now, a new 2000 Explorer XLS 4x4 can be leased for 24 months for only $279 a month. And there's only $1545 due at signing. Just see your neighborhood Ford dealer right away. They've got your ride. You're one of a kind. Ford's got your ride. Coming tonight. The Will and Grace-a-thon. Six episodes all in one great night. Bonus. Voted by you, the viewer, to be the six best episodes. It might include this one, or this one, or maybe this one. Whoa, got skirt. Six episodes on the Will and Grace-a-thon. NBC tonight. If looks could kill, you wouldn't last five minutes. Titans, this fall's guilty pleasure on NBC. I'm Kelly. I'm a single mom raising three little boys. The hardest part is that my former spouse will not pay child support. When fathers simply refuse to live up to their obligations, they shouldn't be allowed to just disappear. A deadbeat parent walks out of the court system. They laugh and laugh and laugh. They got away with it again. My legislation says if you skip out on paying child support and a court says you must pay, the IRS will come after you for that money. Fathers have responsibilities. I think he's the man for the job. If you've been down to the Grand Rapids Police Department lately, you may have noticed some really young faces. Well, those kids are part of a new program that pairs at-risk kids with police mentors in hopes of keeping the kids focused on their goals and out of trouble. The interns range in age from 14 to 17, and each are, are given re a number of responsibilities. Several of the interns have expressed an interest in becoming cops. We try to provide a positive uh, atmosphere to where they're encouraged to stay on a straight path and continue working towards their goals and not let those go. The internships are part of the Workforce Investment Act, which funds this program and others like it all across the country. Phase one may be two years from becoming a reality, but members of the commission putting together an 1,800-acre urban park for Metro Grand Rapids are going full speed ahead with their plan. Old gravel pits would be turned into swimming areas, dusty trails into picnic areas. Members of Kent County's Millennium Commission took a look at the areas which will make up the park. Build as a millennium gift to the area, the park would eventually follow the Grand River from Johnson Park in Walker to John Ball Park in Grand Rapids. Former ambassador to Italy and local businessman Peter Secchia is heading up the campaign. It's a lot of vision. You have to have some imagination to take uh, some land that's been ravaged and gravel pits and tie it together and create this beautiful monument that we're trying to create. Phase one alone will cost $5 million. $3 million of that will be paid through a grant from Kent County, the rest from a private fundraising drive. You could call it the ultimate form of dedication, but three teenage girls, all civic-minded, all from Portage, are proving they love the pop group NSYNC so much so, they walked 160 miles for tickets to tonight's show at the Silverdome. Stephanie Flick, Jamie Johnson, and Sarah Hayes made the walk from their home in Portage to Pontiac in a little more than eight days, but it's not all about the show. The girls used the trip to raise money for Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the Bronson Children's Hospital in Kalamazoo. What an effort. Walk that far for a concert. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> for, that, that's okay. for that concert. And think shit, I come <laughs> they to love them. them. Yeah. They love them. <laughs> What have you got? What? Western Michigan yeah. Athletic Department got a big shot in the arm. They announced that today. We'll tell you what that's all about. And give you the rest of the day sports when your 24-hour news 8 continues. Accused criminals have all kinds of rights, but the victims of crime do not have rights that are always protected and guaranteed. That's why I'm for a constitutional amendment to protect victims' rights so that for example, if somebody has been a crime victim and the person who committed that crime is about to be released, they ought to be notified. If there's a trial, they ought to have a right to, to speak to the jury. The people who are hurt by crime need to be heard. We're going all out to save you money during Talsma Furniture's clearance sale. We must close out all discontinued furniture in all three stores in all departments. Look for the bright yellow balloons with up to 50% off clearance savings and make no payments or interest till next year.
And don't miss the big tent sale with extra savings this week in Holland. Talsma Furniture in Hudsonville, Holland, and our new store on 84th and 131 at the Byron Center exit. Toyota's region-wide tent sale is back, and it's hotter than ever. Drive home a new fuel-efficient Camry CE with zero due at signing. That's right, not a penny out of pocket. And this Camry's loaded with air, power windows, and locks, and a lot more for just $289 a month for 48 months with zero due at signing. But only for a limited time. Look for the tents, then look for the hot deals. Hot, hot. The Toyota tent sale and zero due at signing in July 31st. See your Toyota dealer today. Close the door on high prices with savings on Larson Storm and Screen Doors from Menards. Let in cool breezes with a crossbuck or traditional door. On sale, $139. Colonial style, only $149. Secure big savings on dependable Yale lock sets. With a 25-year mechanical warranty, these entry sets are on sale just $8.99. A combo pack with entry set and deadbolt lock is only $16.99. Lock into low prices at Menards. Save big money at Menards. It's tough to compete when you have second-rate facilities. The Battle Western Michigan coaches know all too well, but today's announcement should change that. The Donald J. Seeley Athletic Center is scheduled to open in the fall of 2002. Western Michigan has not built a practice facility in over 40 years, but the Seeley Center should be worth the wait. This is a $21.5 million building, $8 million of which is from private funds, and it will provide the Bronco football, baseball, golf, soccer, softball, and track teams an indoor facility to practice in, something they desperately need. It's imperative for us in order to stay Division I to be competitive in all aspects and one of the major aspects of that is in our athletic facilities. It, it depends on what kind of recruits you're going to recruit. It, it makes a difference in the facilities that your student athletes have a chance to train in. This is definitely going to be a student-centered facility that is going to provide opportunities for our coaches and our student athletes to be successful. Groundbreaking for the Seeley Center is scheduled to take place by the spring of 2001. You don't have to worry about Tom Chorney leaving anything on the track on Thursday. The Fruitport native is one big race away from earning a berth on the United States Olympic team. Chorney is one of the top 3,000 meter steeplechase athletes in this country and last night he proved that at the Olympic trials by finishing third in his heat. His time, 8 minutes, 27.67 seconds, was 7th best overall, but he conserved his energy down the stretch. Chorney's third place finish automatically qualified him for Thursday's final. The top three will represent the U.S. in the summer games in Sydney, Australia. Well, when he isn't playing hockey in the NHL, there's a pretty good chance you'll find Grant Haven's Dan Bilesman doing one of three things. Fishing, playing golf, or teaching kids how to play hockey. Bowles was holding his, his annual hockey camp at Michigan National Ice Center this week. But for the first time in his career, he's doing it as a member of a team other than the LA Kings. He is making the move to the Anaheim Mighty Ducks next season. Yeah, but I think this is an opportunity to go to a team who, who uh, is eager to have me, who uh, pursued me, um, you know, gave me a couple phone calls a day trying to get me to sign with them. And I think that's uh, something that made me feel good and, and made me feel like I had an opportunity to go in and and be part of a solution for a team that's uh, trying to get to the playoffs. Lance Armstrong called it the toughest day he has ever had on a bike. The ride was stage 16 of the Tour de France. Armstrong finished eighth overall, but lost nearly two minutes to his lead. Jan Ulrich pulled to within five minutes, 37 seconds, with five stages remaining, all of them, on flat land. Isaiah Thomas is one step closer to becoming the new head coach of the Indiana Pacers. Thomas paid off the $750,000 he owed CBA owners from his purchase of the league last year. The NBA will not let Thomas coach until he sells the CBA. He's rumored to have an agreement with the Players Association. And Isaiah is one of the finalists, one of two finalists, and the one they want to replace Larry Bird. So one legend to another there mm. if he finally becomes head coach there. That's a great transition, wouldn't it be? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. We're going to check in now with Susan Shaw in the newsroom for a look at what's coming up tonight on News 8 at 11. With a big controversy behind them, officials at Great Lakes Downs say they're still facing some troubles. In depth tonight, Brian Sterling looks at how schools can challenge gifted students to reach higher. And we'll have much more on the financial problems at Community Haven and its uncertain future. Those stories and more coming up tonight at 11. All right, thank you, Susan. Have a good evening, everybody. And Any we'll sunshine see. left out there? Not much. Not much. <laughs> no. Gonna miss the sunset tonight, huh? <laughs> right. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, good. And we'll see you at 11 o'clock yeah. tonight.
More people watch 24-Hour News 8 than any other news station in West Michigan. If we really want to make sure no child gets left behind...